All right, everybody. Hello again. This is going to be the part five video of this IA uh, walkthrough on this. Uh, it's going to be a shorter video today. I only got about uh, 20 minutes before I have to start teaching a class again. So let's get started. All right. So um, last time uh, I was writing code to take the user interfaces or the view that the user sees, right, and connect it to a class that controls the logic, a controller class versus the uh, the user interface itself. Lots of different phrases for this, but I'm just going to go with that simple explanation there. And we did it both with the main user interface and with the user interface we've designed for when you enter a new note in our electronic notes database. Okay, or we will be doing that. So just to refresh your memory, in that main user interface, the source code that we have will have it such that any action, like for example, creating a new note, displaying notes, all the buttons will then connect to the controller class, which will then launch methods that does the same thing, okay? Um, including the constructor itself. Now, what I want to do today is also do this with the new note class. So with the new note class, the same thing will happen, right? So when, and I could use the main user interface as a bit of a guide for this. So the same way I set up a controller for the main user interface, I'm going to also do the same thing here for the new note controller, right? And for the new note user interface. All right, let's get down to business. So when the new note user interface launches, I will create a private um, new note controller called controller. And then I will instantiate that and again, using this other one as a guide, I will instantiate it in the constructor of the user interface. So the controller equals a new um, new note UI, new note controller. And I'm going to pass it a reference to this user interface and anything that the user interface might need to alter. Now, in this one, there's a few things, right? It might need to alter um, the, the two text boxes for the title and the date, and then the other main text box or text area that uh, will be for the note. So I'm going to send it references to all those things. So to this, the J um, text area one or text field one, we'll start with the text fields, J text field two, running out of space here, so I'm just going to shift this a little bit. Text field 1, text field 2, the uh, the text area 1 as well, okay? So all of these things will be sent over to my controller, so it has a reference to them. It has a link or a connection to them. So it's going to connect to to the actual user interface itself, and then the two fields and the text area. I don't think I need to connect to the buttons. They're not going to get changed by the controller. I don't think I need to connect to the labels. They're not going to get, they're just there for the user to view. Now, as far as the buttons go though, when the buttons are clicked, that will also signal something for the controller, right? This is the okay button. So I'll signal a method called okay over in the other class. And similarly, when I hit cancel, it will also signal a cancel event over in the controller class. And like we learned in the other one, I'm also going to right click on my J frame and go to the window closing event. Okay. And I did this in the other one as well. So that when the controller is closing, it will also signal an event as well, just in case the user finds another way to close the um, the frame. Hi, sorry, Hi. Yeah, it's okay. I hope that didn't. I hope I was able to pause the video there. There was a little rigmarole. Anyways, let's move on. So I'm going to now create all these methods over in that class. I'm going to use the light bulb to do that. So one, create the constructor over in the controller class. Two, create an OK method. Three, create a cancel method. Then create a closing method. Now, another thing I'm going to do that I didn't do in the last one is these two lines of code to set 
location to null and set visible to true. I'm going to take those two lines and I'm going to bring them over to the controller class. Let it do that logic. So here in the controller class, you can kind of see now when it builds this constructor. And again, I got to kind of clean up the code a little bit here with this. I'm going to bring in those two lines. But now it's not this set visible to true, but the new note UI, which I'm going to now rename as well. Instead of a this, I'm just going to say new note UI, new note UI. And then I could put that right here and here as well. It should still do the same thing. Now I'm going to do that as well back on the main UI. Since I did it here, I'm going to take these two lines, cut them, move over to the constructor. That was a testing line. I'm going to paste in here this instead, and same idea. I'm going to rename this main UI and place that right there and there. Okay. And just to um, yeah, okay, so let's uh, let's give it a whirl. And as well, I'm going to, once again, just to test this to see what happens when the new note UI appears, I'm going to try and make a, a new new note UI right here, just, to, just for testing purposes. Okay, so let's do a quick run, see if all those little uh, code connections are still in place. And uh, create new note, and there it is. So you can see there, it's still doing the exact same code. We've just shifted the logic over to the controller class. Successfully, we've successfully done that, okay? What this means now is that our main UI and our new note UI, these user interfaces, are done. We don't have to work with them anymore. They are visually done, and as far as the code is concerned, the code is connected to another class which is going to do the actual logic. So I guess the only last thing we would need to do with these classes is properly comment them. So I'm just going to steal a little bit of this commenting from, uh, from over here. Okay, so this is my new note UI. Okay, steal a little of this. Um, a little of this code over here. Okay, so the user interface uh, view that the user interacts with um, when creating a new note. That's what this is, okay? Um, I'm going to copy that and go over to the main UI, and I'm going to similarly paste that in there. Take a little bit of commentary over with me. Okay, so this is the main UI, the user interface, the user interacts with for all main interactions in this program, right? So this is the main user interface that they interact with, okay? This is already commented, but maybe, maybe I want to add a little comment here for this controller. I just think because it's a private thing, uh, connection to an encapsulated, encapsulated um, controller for this view, okay? And that's going to be the same in both, right? So copy that over to here as well. So I'm kind of getting all that all organized for um, my solution. But now the nice thing is I'm just going to close those two tabs. I am done officially with these user interfaces specifically, and now I'm going to work with the controllers specifically. So the controllers now take over for the logic, okay? Now it made a bunch of methods for me in both classes, but it didn't quite do them very well. Like for example, the word public, private, or protected is not sitting in the front of these methods. So I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to put some keyword public at the front here because they are public. If they're not public, they wouldn't be interconnected with that other class. Now I might end up making private methods as well or utility methods, but for now I am making these public methods 
for this class, okay? The new note controllers are now all set up. Okay, and we've got some pretty good logic here. If we want, we could put in little testing code for all of this, right? Or stub code, like what happens when I click OK? What happens when I click Cancel? What happens when, I, when this thing is closing, right? We did that a little bit um, back in this one. But, you know, might as well. And this could actually be written into our testing plan as well. That might be a good opportunity. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that today. Maybe I will. Um, but I, I think that might be a good thing because we're literally testing some of these connections right now. So that could be part of our testing plan. Maybe I'll just quickly note that in our uh, documentation stuff. So in our section B, we are, we're going to get to that testing plan. This might be that good opportunity to add in some content into that testing plan as to what we're going to be doing. So we'll scroll down to the testing plan. It's sitting there waiting for us to put in there. And I'm just going to make a note. Um, during UI development, stub code was placed in the controller classes to ensure the user actions matched with the logic. That's good enough. I think that, that kind of states what I was doing there. So I'm just going to make sure that's part of my testing plan for now. I'll, I'll flesh it out and make it look nicer later. That'll be in a different video. Okay, so let's just once again try and get some of this stuff down so that I can make sure that the actions that the user does are going to be connected to the correct matching actions in a now another class, right? Okay, so let's do a little test run. We're going to watch system.out to make sure this works the way we want. So when I click create new note, it says new note, which is right. Here in this note, new note class, I can click OK, and notice it says OK. I can click Cancel, notice it says Cancel. I can close that, and it does shut down, which is uh, actually reveals something that I'm going to need to do, is I don't want it to shut down the whole program, but that's OK. We can fix that in a second. Display all notes, display selected note, display selected note twice. What? Oh, delete selected note. I can't even read. Uh, search all notes and sort all notes, and when this thing closes, it's closed. Okay, looking good. So our logic is interconnected, and it revealed, okay, so that has revealed that there's something I actually do still need to do with one of the user interfaces, and that is with the new note user interface. This is actually a NetBeans design thing based on one of its properties. So one of the properties of this JFrame and I could code it as well, but it's easier done just with the uh, the properties window. So I better make sure that uh, I'm going to just reset these windows. There we go. So the property of this um, frame, you can see right here, the default close operation is to exit the program. Well, I don't want to do that. When this thing closes... I don't want it to do that. I want it to essentially do nothing. Okay? Why? Because I want my controller to take control of that. Okay? So when it's closing, I don't want it to do anything. I'm going to say do nothing. And I'm going to do that for both of my user interfaces. Because I want to be in charge of what happens. So I'm going to go to the main UI. And I'm going to similarly have it do nothing. Okay, and then I'm going to put the logic into my controller class. So now when the new note is closing, I am in charge of this. I can say that my new note UI dot, I want to get rid of it. I want to dispose of it. Okay, so this is a new note UI, right? So what would I do with that? Well, you can see here I can't write code for this because this thing is still just a parameter of this method. So I need a way to make these 
things I passed over to this class available in more methods than just the, the constructor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them global variables or more accurately in the terms now that you should know, these are going to be properties of this class. So, okay, so there we go. This also is something I think I'm going to encapsulate, so I'm going to make them all private. Oops, let's try that again. Okay. In addition to making them private, I'm going to rename them, right? So this text field 1, which one is that one, right? Which is text field 1 in my user interface? Well, text field 1 is the one for the title. So that's a good thing to know. So this is my title text, and I'm going to switch to the word text box. I know that's more of a... Um, a uh, sort of Visual Studio one for those of you who took that course with me, but I think that'll work. How's our time? I'll give. We only have a few more minutes. With and this is the actual note text box. Okay, so there's better names for my properties. Okay, and in addition to doing them here, I'm going to do them here. Same thing. Okay, so it's the same thing here. And now I need to connect them. I need to connect this property with this parameter. And I'm saying the word this because that's what we're going to do. This dot, and you can see here I can connect one thing to the other thing that way. And this is code you should be familiar with if you've taken coursework with me, how this essentially works. So I'm doing it very quickly here, but this is not code that should be unfamiliar to you if you've taken my coursework before. All right. There we go. Wired it up. Now when I'm down here, now you can see I can call upon methods like dispose. To dispose of it, I'm in control of this now. I'm disposing of it when it's closing. Okay. Similarly, I can do. I'm going to be doing the same thing with the main controller in a second. But let's just see if that works. So I create a new note, and now when I dispose of it, it I'm in control of what happens when it disposes of it. See here now, I can't dispose of this one because I said to do nothing. All right. So let's now do the same thing to main controller that we just did with the other one. Less properties to worry about but still properties. All right. All right, we'll make the private. Okay, and I'm going to rename this. This is the list box of all the notes. So all, or I'll just say notes list box. Okay, and I know it just calls it a list, but, um, you know, I'm kind of using some stuff from, um, those of you who took my uh, grade 10 or grade 9 level course, um, you would recognize some of this from there. Okay, and one more line. Notes list box equals notes list box. Okay, so now that it's all interconnected, I can similarly, when closing here, say that the main UI dot dispose. Now, this also means I'm in charge of things like saving to file and stuff like that when that comes up. So that's going to be coming up in a little bit. But we're going to have to wrap up this, note, this uh, program right now or this video as that's all the time I have for today.